tale of John Henry. Big John. Big John. Every morning at the mine you could see him arrive. He stood six foot six and weighed 245, kind of broad at the shoulder and narrow at the hip. And everybody knew you didn't give no lip to Big John. I had made a list of a bunch of baby boy names that I liked, and there was some names on there that Phil said they were definite no-nos. Like, the only one I could really remember was Wolfgang. <laughs> we were cooking dinner one night right there in the kitchen, and mm -hmm. um, we were listening to Hoy Axton, one of our favorite musicians. and The song John Henry came on. And um, it's an old folk song, and he wasn't the first one to do it, but um, since he's one of our favorites, it was uh, a real memorable one for us, and um, we thought John Henry's a pretty cool name. Yeah, Phil just said, I really like this song. It's called John Henry. He just farted. March 30th at, I think it was 2.30 in the morning, I got my first contraction, and it was um, not very strong, but strong enough to wake me up, and Phil was still sleeping in the bed, and I timed them for one hour, and they were about 10 minutes apart for the first hour, and that's when I woke Phil up and told him. Oh, I was up, like, somewhere between there. Um thinking about all the stuff I had to do to get ready before you came. Um, and so I was kind of up when you were sort of stirring, but I didn't realize that you had already started counting. Mm -hmm. So you might have known. Yeah, because I was awake when you <laughs> said, hey. Yeah. I think John Henry's coming today. Yeah, so Phil went to school at like 3 o'clock in the morning to get the stuff ready for a substitute teacher. And um, at 3 o'clock in the morning, too, I frantically mm -hmm. was tying up l last odds and ends. I did a load of laundry and got the dishwasher going. And um, I was able to fall asleep, even though the contractions kept coming. And took a hot shower. And Phil came back sometime in the morning. And we had breakfast in bed, I think. And um, we uh, the dogs were cuddling with us. And we watched our favorite episode of The Office. <laughs> or not our favorite episode, but the episode where Pam gives birth in the office. Yeah. That's right. It's a baby, see? Sir, sir you can't smoke that in here. Okay. Put it, put it we out. We labored here at the house for 13 hours, and it was just amazing. Um, we just hung out in the bed and kept it really mellow, and outside it was a crazy windstorm and it was really comforting to be in our home. Her grandparents came over and um, Grandpa Greg asked me how I was doing and something about the way he asked me, mm -hmm. I just started crying and uh, that's when I knew it was time to go to the hospital. And he already had the Hyundai all loaded up and your mom hobbled into the car, <laughs> <laughs> and we headed to the hospital. And there were tumbleweeds rolling across the road. And when we got to the hospital, I was—I must have been mid contraction because the woman at the front desk was helping some other lady, and I didn't think we needed to check in or something. I don't know. So we just went straight up to the labor and delivery unit. But when we got there, they kind of scolded us and. <laughs> I started to feel really hot and shaky, and which is kind of funny because I was telling the nurses, I was, oh, I'm getting really hot, and they're like, ooh, that's great. That's great news. That means you're transitioning, and I didn't really even know what they were talking about, but, um, and so I started getting really hot, and then I asked Phil to fan me, so he was fanning me, and then I was getting too hot. I needed a wet rag on my cool on my neck, and so to cool me down. So then he got me at that, and then and then I'd have a contraction, and then I would be freezing cold and needed a blanket, and then kind of went like that back and forth. And I started getting really shaky. Push for five more seconds. Five, four, three, two, one. Oh! <laughs> 
<laughs> and again, they were just like, that's great news. You're, that means you're transitioning. And, um, and then soon enough, we transitioned into the pushing stages. And um, by that point, I had basically had my eyes closed. Like the whole, I mean, I'd, as soon as we got to the hospital, I just kept my eyes closed because it just felt natural to me. And then when we got there, um, it it was definitely into the what felt like the final stages, um, and um, when I feel like we passed the threshold into the urge to push phase, kind of every time her contractions came would be sort of howling, um, just like ooh. Yeah. And then they, um, they didn't teach us that in the birth class. It yeah, just, that's what came naturally. Yeah, <laughs> um, but then one came and it was <laughs> guys. Hello. Um, sorry to be a bother, but uh, if we could have an ETA, when this is gonna, you're starting. You're kind of losing them. I remember a nurse came in afterwards <laughs> saying. Hey, we heard that last one. That that sounded like uh, we're on to the next phase. And your little head that was I thought it was going to be this big came out and it was like this big. <laughs> My name's John Hinton. I got muscles of steel and I was born three weeks ago. And Nurse Vicky asked us if we wanted to take the placenta home, which I had already decided I didn't want to take it home. <laughs> But your dad wanted me to eat it. <laughs> <laughs> and I told him that he could eat it if he wanted to that bad. <laughs> anyway, you came out healthy as a horse. And um, about an hour later, you got to breastfeed for the first time. And you actually clamped my nipple so hard it bruised it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was Ouchie. pretty painful. <laughs> yeah, It was a whirlwind, huh? Mm -hmm. You're a little tumbleweed that blew in with the wind. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. John Henry's pappy woke him up one midnight. He said.